In a previous video, I showed you how to take attendance with just checkboxes and formulas. I want to show you one advanced way to take attendance if we want to keep a log of each and every student and the day they were there. We absolutely can do checkboxes and it is a type of database where we have the rows are a student and the columns are the day that they're attending. We have a count with count if to know how many times they are truly there. And then we also have a percentage here where we're just taking the total true, we're dividing it by the sum of true and false. But let me show you a more advanced way to take attendance. I will actually duplicate this and we have students. I'm gonna delete all of the columns and we're just gonna write here attendance. We're going to come back and review this count and percentage later, but right now, how do we take attendance for a student? We will want we will want a checkbox here, so we're going to insert checkbox. It is a normal checkbox, just true or false. But we're going to go over to extensions, app script, and we're going to keep a log of every single student that we mark as true in attendance. The function we're going to use is an on, meaning this function will run every single time we have an edit. We edit a value, we change the value in a cell. We can create event, and this event is gonna have some really cool parameters. Basically, we are gonna be able to know the row, so we do variable row equals event dot range dot get row. We know the column, variable column equals event dot range dot get, can you guess it? Column, yes, column. We can, we know this, so we can do logger dot log row, we can do logger log column, and we can look at this. So let's do this. Let's do a couple of edits, just checking off that checkbox is an edit. We'll go to our executions and just look at that row and column. Here it is running, and we will see after a few moments, if we refresh a couple times, here we see two two. This means it's row two and column two, or rather, B. So that's really cool that we now know every time we are editing something where the edit is. And we only want to log or keep track of any time we edit the B column here. So we're going to do if column is equal to 2. We also only care about beyond the header, so we'll do double ampersand for and row is greater than 1. We don't care if we edit the header column at all. We only want to know if we edit that column under the first row. That's why we do greater than 1. And once we do that, what we're going to do is keep a log. We will say students here and we will add a sheet called log. We will call it log. And all we need is the student and a timestamp to know this is when we recorded the date. It'll include the date, the time if we wish. So we want a time sample to create variable time equals new date. We can format this as well. We can do utilities.format date and we can put this new date inside of there and then format it in maybe GMT plus eight or minus six time zone. We can also say, hey, just give us the day. So we'll do year slash month slash DD, or we can reverse that, and if you really want to do DD, then the month, then the year. So that's the timestamp we will enter into the second column on log. So we need to get the sheet called log. So we go spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet dot get sheet by name log get range is going to be. So actually, we can call this variable log equals, and we want to make sure that we're only editing on the sheet called. So we'll say variable sheet equals spreadsheet app dot get active sheet get name and we'll make sure ampersand sheet is equal to student. So we'll make this timestamp on log only if we are editing on the student tab. So we have a log, we want to go log dot append row. And what do we want to append the row with? We want two things. We want the student name and we want timestamp. So how do we get the student name? We get it from the row that we're on. We'll do variable student name is. We want to create variable student sheet equals this and call it student. So on the student sheet, student sheet, we will get range and the range will be the row that we're on over here, but it'll make sure that we're in the first column. And we only need one column, one, one, one column, one row, but we actually also need to get the value. So we need to get the value out of there. And now let's see if this works. On the student tab, we can do Carla there and see we have a failure. Let's check out the failure. Date is not defined. Let's go fix that. It's on line eight. I think we just do not all caps, new date. Let's save that. Once it's saved, once it's saved, we can now go back to student and let's do, try Darlene and Edna, and there's Darlene and Edna, and we get a timestamp. And it is exactly the date that we're doing this. The second thing we want to do is once we are uh, logging their attendance, we want to uncheck this box. So we'll go back to student sheet, dot get range, the row, 
and column two, and we will dot uncheck. So as we check it off, it gets unchecked. So we only need to, it's actually, there we go. So now if we do Andrew, go to our log and see Andrew is there and we have it unchecked. So we've turned these checkboxes into buttons to log their attendance. So we can go down the list, Melvin, Nate, Opal, and let's see if they're logged. Yes, Melvin, Nate, and Opal are all logged on today's date. So this is an advanced way to take attendance if you wanna keep a log of your students and only want to keep your student names here, very simple page. And if we wanna count, we do equals, count if, but now we're using the log as the count if, and we're looking for their student name. We can autofill that, and as we log more, we get two, one, two, and we can do a percentage of just taking two divided by how many days are in our, that we are counting, right? You can always do equals this divided by, let's say we went, we're gonna have 100 days of school, and there you go, you have a percentage of attendance here, and it'll keep going up and up every time you take attendance log.